Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it is September, which in Oklahoma means that it's not quite summer and it's not quite fall. I have my windows open in my house, which is really lovely, but at night I'm probably going to close them and turn the air conditioner on because it's not cold enough here to actually sleep like that. So I'm still doing some cooking out on the grill uh, and I'm also doing some like colder weather soup type stuff. So I thought I would show you guys kind of a few things that I still have going in my kitchen or that I have started going in my kitchen uh, right now during this like weird in between time. So I have a bunch of apples. Uh, so I am going to, we really like to eat them just plain, uh, sometimes with some peanut butter. So I'm not gonna use all of my apples today, but I am going to make a couple of different things with them because it's also the beginning of apple season here, which means that the more things that I can buy in season, the cheaper I'm gonna be able to get my groceries and then also just the fresher, better tasting that they're gonna be. So I love right now being able to uh, use whatever's in season. So, so the first thing that I'm gonna get started on making is applesauce. Now, if you've never made applesauce before, this is actually super, super simple. So the first thing that you are going to do is chop and core and peel your apples. So you can do this with like a vegetable peeler and then chop it with a knife. Or if you have one of these handy dandy old timey apple core things, these are really, really nice. I picked this one up at Bed Bath & Beyond. That tells you how long ago I got it. Uh, since that's not even a store anymore. Uh, I picked it up, I think it was like 20 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. I will look for them on Amazon for you guys and link it down below. And it makes chopping and coring and peeling apples a breeze because you're doing it all at one time. So I'm just gonna stick it on here and then you just twist it. So I have all of these pieces that are gonna go out to my chickens. And then that's it. So it is chopped peeled and cored all at the same time. And those are just gonna go in my pan. So I'm gonna do some more of these, enough for us to have applesauce with our dinner tonight. Um, later on in the season, I might go pick up a bunch of apples from a local farm. I have done this before. And make a big batch of applesauce and can it. Right now I have some applesauce in my cabinet, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm probably gonna do maybe seven or eight apples, get them cored, peeled, and chopped up into my pan, and then I will be ready to get going on my actual applesauce. Okay, I have my apples all finished. So now I'm just going to take these over to the stove and get going on the actual applesauce. I have my apples in my pot and I have my, um, my fire about medium low and I'm gonna add the first thing I'm gonna add is about half a cup of a really good apple juice I get this one from Azure Standard it is a good organic apple juice it doesn't have any added sugar to it so I want to make sure and not have anything that's gonna have added sugar because it is going to cook down and concentrate and it's gonna get extra extra sweet so any added sugar that you have to it is just gonna make it impossibly sweet. Um, so I'm not adding any more sugar to it, but the apple juice is going to add just a touch more of the like yummy apple flavor. So I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let it cook and it's just going to go for maybe about half an hour. I will come back and give it a stir every once in a while and then at the end I'll show you what I'm going to add. It's going to make it extra delicious. Let's go for about half an hour and I am going to come in here and just give this a really good stir. So you can put this in a blender, you can use an immersion blender if you want to, but honestly I like mine a little bit chunky. Uh, I like to have a little bit of texture in there. So I am just going to come in and give this a good stir with my spoon and kind of break up the bigger chunks of apples that are in there. But these guys are cooked all the way through and are cooked down pretty well. So now I'm just gonna give it a taste and see if we do happen to need to add a little bit of sugar. Uh, but one of the things that I really love to add to mine is cinnamon. So I am going to do that here, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon, not a ton uh, of cinnamon and a sprinkling of salt. And then we will be done with this. I got my applesauce all done 
and my pan all cleaned out. So I'm going to get started on my next thing for today, and that is going to be some salted caramel sauce and some homemade vanilla ice cream. So we got some ice cream, very summery, and caramel, which for me is super like autumn taste eating, I guess. So we're gonna kind of mix those two together. So I am going to make some salted caramel sauce. This takes like maybe 15 minutes in total. Super simple to do, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Pan, I started out with two cups of sugar, just plain white sugar, and um, like maybe a half a cup of water. I actually didn't measure the water because you're just using the water to make it easier to melt the sugar. So I'm gonna mix this together um, just with a wooden spoon, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to put this over like medium heat. Once I stir it once and give the sides a nice scrape down to make sure that I don't have any sugar granules on the sides, I am going to leave that alone and let it melt completely and start to caramelize. So I'll bring you guys in closer so you can see what that process looks like. And while I am waiting for this to caramelize, I am going to cube up about a cup and a half of butter and measure out my heavy whipping cream as well. Okay, so you can start to see around the edges that we're getting a nice golden brown, like an amber color, which means it's time to add everything else to it. So the longer that you let that sit on the fire, the darker it's gonna be. The darker it gets, the more caramely the flavor is. I don't like mine super, super dark, but I like a good flavor to it, so that color is really good. So I'm gonna start with one, uh, about three quarters of a cup of butter cut into cubes and just mix that in. And while that's starting to melt, I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract and about a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna get that butter nice and incorporated in there. You can see that caramel color. It smells caramely. There we go. Whoop. Now you can see the caramel color. <laughs> Once I get all of that butter melted in there, time to add in the heavy whipping cream. I have about, about a cup, a little more than a cup, honestly. One thing I like about making a caramel sauce instead of caramel candy is you don't need a candy thermometer for it and it's also just really easy um, to make because it's not like super, super precise. So there you go. That's it. You just want to get that all mixed up in there. Just like that. So we're gonna get started on making our ice cream. This is technically not ice cream, this is technically custard because it has eggs in it. And if you're concerned about eating raw eggs, especially if you're pregnant like I am, <laughs> this actually cooks the eggs with the sugar. We're gonna start with two eggs. So it's not really that big of a concern. If you are uncomfortable with it, then obviously don't um, eat it while you're pregnant but it doesn't bother me. So we're gonna start with two eggs, and then to that, we are going to add one and a quarter cups flour. Now I'm gonna blend this up with my uh, handheld mixer until it is nice and creamy looking and it falls back on itself in a ribbon. Okay, you can see when I lift that up, it kind of falls back on itself in a ribbon and that is what you're looking for. So that is going to dissolve that sugar and pasteurize those eggs. The friction in there is going to make it where you can eat them um, if you want to. But again, if you're not comfortable with that, then don't. So then to add to that, I'm going to add just a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then the last thing that I'm going to add here is some heavy whipping cream. I'm going to add two cups of that, and you want to add that last because you don't really want to whip that up. 
Uh, you don't want whipped cream. You just want it to be creamy. So I'm gonna give this a last mix. And that's it. So now we have our custard base. And this needs to be refrigerated. If you're using like a, a countertop ice cream maker like I am, then you wanna refrigerate this and make sure that it gets super cold before you actually pour it into your uh, countertop ice cream maker. If you're using one of the big ones, you can double this recipe, uh, the ones that like you put ice in. You can double this recipe and make a full gallon of it. Um, but in that case, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and then it will be ready for us later. So my ice cream custard base has been in the refrigerator for a couple hours, so it's nice and chilled, so it is time to stick it in my ice cream maker. So this is just a countertop ice cream maker if you have never seen these before. Um, it's pretty common. I think you can get them on Amazon. They usually come in four pieces. So you have this top piece, a paddle, this bowl, thing that is filled with some kind of a liquid that you freeze and then uh, this bottom part. So I am, I've had this bowl in my deep freeze for a couple days now. So it is nice and frozen, which you want is what you want. Uh, so I am just going to add my custard base to that now. But that is not going to completely fill that up. So you're actually going, you're actually going to finish filling that up with whole milk. Oh. So you just finish filling it up with whole milk and give that a quick stir together. Y'all? There. Now you want to put it together. <laughs> like that. And turn it on and let it go for about half an hour. And when it is done churning, we're going to have some homemade vanilla custard ice cream. I am getting started on my pork chops for dinner now. So sometimes I like to cook them on the grill, but tonight I'm just not feeling that. So I'm going to start the pork chops the way every good pork chop should start, with some bacon. So I'm going to fry up, not a ton, just enough that is going to render down some fat to cook the pork chops in. If you already have um, bacon grease in your cabinet um, or in your fridge, then obviously you don't have to do this stuff. You can just throw that grease in your pot. Um, I am out, so I actually need to make some more anyway. So this is a good time for that. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cook up all of this bacon pretty quick and then uh, pour some into my bacon grease jar to save for a different time, and then use the rest just to cook my pork chops up. So while my bacon is cooking, I'm gonna get started on the baked potatoes for dinner. Uh, if you've never made baked potatoes in the Instant Pot, you're missing out. This is like the easiest way to make baked potatoes. I have just given these a good scrubbing so that they are clean. No poke them a few times. And then I have a rack set on the inside of my Instant Pot because you have to have a cup of water in there for your Instant Pot to come to pressure, but you do not want your potatoes to sit in that water or else, you know, they will boil instead of bake. So I'm gonna finish poking these and then I am going to let that go for 18 to 20 minutes. Um, on high pressure and then they will be done. Now every time that I do this I like to make sure and do a lot more than what I would actually need for dinner that night because my family will eat leftover baked potatoes all day long or I can cut them up and use them in like some sort of a hash or something so I do that a lot. So I am going to stick these in the instant pot, flip my bacon and then uh, pretty sure that it's gonna be time to get started on the pork chops now. All right, I am just finishing up the last of my bacon. I'm gonna take the the last batch out and put it on a cutting board. We're gonna use this with our pork chops, uh, and then I'm gonna turn the heat like way high. 
because we want to get we want to get a really good sear on these pork chops um, on the stove top. So I have five. Uh, this is one for my family, and I am just going to salt and pepper the top side right here, and then I'll flip them over and I'll salt and pepper the next side. There's obviously salt in the bacon, so you don't want to go. Okay, so my uh, pan is nice and hot with my bacon grease in it. And I am going to put my pork chops on um, and start searing them. So I want that pan like screaming, screaming hot when I put this in here because I want a crust to form like within maybe one minute, two minutes. So I'm gonna stick these in my pan and get started on the topping. So while my pork chops are searing away, I'm going to chop up my bacon and I'm gonna dice up an apple pretty small. So for our family, I'm just gonna use one because not everybody likes the topping on this, uh, but my husband really does. So I'm going to dice up just one apple, so small. I'm not gonna worry about peeling it this time. Okay. Pork chops are seared. They're very loud. They're not done cooking all the way through. Um, pork, just like chicken, you want to make sure reaches the correct internal temperature, which this is not yet. This just has a sear on the outside. My apple bacon mixture. And this is just going to go right on top. And what this is going to do is, well, that bacon is going to keep lingering down a little bit. And then the apple is just going to soften on top of there and just kind of throw some sweetness and it is going to be delicious on top of that pork chop. So I am going to cut this and I'm going to stick it in the oven for about 20 minutes until the correct internal temperature is reached on the pork chops and then they will be ready to go. Okay, uh, so I am done cooking my pork chops. My baked potatoes are done in the Instant Pot, and I'm going to pull out the applesauce that I made earlier today, and that is going to be our dinner tonight, and then we have ice cream with caramel sauce for dessert. So that is what we are kind of cooking right now for not quite summer, not quite fall. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I will see you next time. Bye.